Hey guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the factory design pattern in object-oriented programming. Okay, so let's go ahead and dig into it. And we'll start off by taking a quick look at how Wikipedia defines this. Because why not? It's good enough. And um, Wikipedia is always great. So in class-based programming, the factory method pattern is a creational pattern that uses factory methods to deal with the problem of creating objects without having to specify the exact class of the object that will be created. This is done by creating objects by calling a factory method, either specified in an interface and implemented by child classes, or implemented in a base class and optionally overridden by derived classes, rather than calling a constructor. So you're getting rid of the constructor here. So this is one of the patterns from the so-called Gang of Four design patterns that lay out how to solve common design problems when creating object-oriented software. So here's a definition for it. Define an interface for creating an object, but let subclasses decide which class to instantiate. The factory method lets a class defer instantiation it uses to subclasses. All right, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like in a C++ program. All right, so what we'll do is we'll start off by making an abstract base class and we'll call this uh, shape, okay? So our factory is going to make all kinds of different shapes. That's what it's gonna be responsible for doing, okay? So we're gonna need to have this abstract base class which is gonna define that anything that is a shape is gonna have at least one method. And um, we'll just call this method um, get name. Okay, uh, let's see here. It's gonna be an abstract base class. So we have to make that virtual and we have to assign it to zero. All right, now what we'll do is we'll make the three different types of shapes that you can have. All right, so we'll have class triangle, okay, which is a shape, all right. And all this will do is override um, that inherited method, uh, string get name, and it'll just return, you know, the name of the shape, which is gonna be um, triangle, okay? Uh, so that's one type of shape that our factory will be able to create. Then we'll have a square, okay? And it's gonna have to override, if I can learn how to spell, public, uh, get name as well, because anything that is a shape must have an implementation of the get name method. And this will simply return square, okay? And then we'll have one more shape here, class. Uh, we'll call this what? Uh, we got triangle, square, and circle, okay. And public method string get name return uh, circle. Okay, so these are the three types of objects that our factory is going to be able to create. Okay. Now what I'll do next is I'll make a. Um, oops, I forgot my shape here is I'll make an enumerated data type. We'll call this um, uh, type, okay? And this will just have uh, three types in it. Um, you know, one for each of these things. So we'll have triangle, uh, square, and circle. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass one of these enumerated uh, values, one of these enumerators as an argument to our factory method in the factory object to specify which um, object we want it to create and give to us. Okay, so we'll use that enumerated data type and these enumerators in here to specify that. Okay, so let's go ahead now and create our class factory. And the factory is responsible for creating and returning um, you know, shape objects on demand. Okay, so 
we're going to have that factory method that we were talking about. So, um, and it's going to return a shape, shape, um, get shape, or you know, we can call this the factory method itself, or whatever. You know, you can make, call it create. I think I'll call it create. You can call it whatever you want. Um, so here's where we're going to use that enumerated type. So we'll call this type T. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll put a, um, a uh, switch statement in here, I think. Okay. So we'll say switch T. Okay. And based on whatever was, um, whatever was passed here, right? Based off of whether it's a triangle, square, or circle, then if it is case triangle, then this thing is going to return a new uh, triangle. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And that should be a shape reference or pointer. <laughs> Sorry, this is, this is C++. Okay, so we'll go ahead and break. Well, I guess I don't need a break since I'm returning, right? I mean, we'll be done with it. So then we'll have case uh, square. Okay, then we'll return new square. And then we'll have case uh, circle. And then we'll return new circle. Okay, so, and I like these to be all lined up, so I'm gonna line them up. Just like that. Okay. So now my factory, whenever I invoke this create method, I'm going to pass it either the enumerator triangle, square, or circle, and then the switch statement will go through, and based off of what I passed it, it will return a memory address to a brand new dynamically allocated triangle, square, or circle. Okay, so this is our factory, and then this is the factory create method, right? So this is the factory method. I'll call it create in this one. So now whenever my main program the rest of my program needs a triangle or a square or a circle, it just goes and asks the factory. So the factory is responsible. That's its job. Its job is to create different shapes on demand. So um, I could come here and I could say something like, um, oh, let's, let's make a vector. Let's do that. Okay, so we'll get really fancy. I'll make a vector of shapes specifically a vector of shape pointers. So we'll say vector uh, shape star shapes. Okay. And then um, we'll say shapes dot push back. Uh, and we'll ask for the factory to create for us a, um, a uh, shape. Okay, now let's let's make an instance of the factory here. So we'll do factory uh, F. Okay, so now we can just ask whenever we need to get a shape, we can just say F dot create. I want a triangle. Okay, and so uh, that create method will return a um, shape pointer. Right? In this case, it's going to be a triangle shape, and so that'll be assigned to the first element of the vector. Okay, and we'll do that two more times. Once for a um, square, and then once for a circle. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and we'll iterate through the vector, and we'll call each of the shapes uh, get name method in turn. So for um, for shape star, we'll make it by reference, um, S in shapes, we'll go ahead and say S get name. Okay. Matter of fact, I don't even need that there, do I? Okay. And then of course we don't want any memory leaks here. So we need to go through and delete all of our shapes that we created in the vector. Okay, so that should do it. And then uh, we should probably empty out our vector too. Huh? Vector dot clear. Uh, oops, called it shapes, not vector. 
Okay, so that should clean up our mess. So here's our cleanup. Clean up. And our factory is responsible for creating shape objects on demand. So let's create three different shape objects and assign their memory addresses to our shapes vector. Then we will iterate over each shape uh, object calling its uh, get name method um, using its pointer. And then we'll have our cleanup right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it. See what happens. Oh, it would help if I actually did a uh, C out here, huh? Okay, let's do that. Now let's try it one more time. Okay, so there you go. So there's triangle, square, circle. Now let's put them on separate lines. So that way it doesn't look like it was just one call. Okay, so triangle, square, circle. So there you go. So let's just go back and, and take one last look at the code and see what we did. Okay, so first thing we did is we created an abstract base class which defines what it means to be a shape. Okay, and we just said that anything that's a shape must have this get name method. So this was a pure virtual function, which is what makes it an abstract base class, which is basically, it just exists to be inherited from. So what's inheriting from it? Class triangle, class square, class circle. So a circle, a square, and a triangle, they all is a shape. Then we created a factory whose job it was to create instances of each of these shapes on demand. Okay, by passing a integer, well in this case we used an enum, right? So an enumerator that matches up for each of the different objects. So in case we pass a triangle, then we then the uh, factory is going to instantiate return a triangle object. In the case of a square, then it's going to instantiate and return a square. In case of a circle, um, etc. Okay. Um, and then in main, what did we do? Created a vector of shape pointers, created our factory. Then as we needed a new object, right? We just asked the factory, hey, give me a triangle. Hey, give me a square. Hey, give me a circle. And then we put its memory address in our vector. Then we iterated over the vector, dereferencing each one of the pointers in turn. So that way we could invoke the get name method for each of the objects whose memory address was stored in that vector and then we cleaned ourselves up, okay? So yeah, I mean, this is the basics of the factory pattern, right? So the factory, by invoking this um, factory method right here, we're able to create a triangle or a square or a circle, whatever object it is as we need it. And all of the behavior, all of the logic for all the different shapes, right? They're all encapsulated and the client code doesn't need to know anything it just needs to be able to ask the factory, hey, give me what I need when I need it, okay? So that's everything that I've got for you in this video. Uh, if you found the video was useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, well, you got that thumbs down button as well. Um, please consider supporting the channel in various ways. We've got super thanks. We've got memberships with additional perks for as little as 99 cents a month. Subscribe, leave a comment. You know, whatever. And as usual, if you're a student of mine, please consider or please feel free to stop by my office hours anytime or send me an email uh, or hit me up on Zoom. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.